and welcome back to the workshop and we're going to continue with this restoration stroke slash rebuild now i do have a lot of license with what i want to do with this quite simply the gentleman is um shall i say extremely open to me producing a stick and the only real requirement for me is to keep the said deer antler pretty much as the main component so ultimately i've had you know license to do a lot more than what somebody doing a professional restoration might have now just to recap on that the actual wood uh, shaft was of no use it could not be renovated um there is always that you know could you you know add products to it or vacuum in epoxy to it or or do something miraculously with the shaft to save it but ultimately for a um a stick which will be a farm tool and is which is going to be used for herding cattle in that you know you would not need or even want to go to the expense or the actual um, inconvenience to try and save it through those methods indeed a lot of the stick was actually snapped off in any case and the wood was all powdered so you were not really saving anything of value even if you wanted to go to the full extreme measures to try and do so and you know in my opinion it wasn't viable so the first job for me is basically now is to take this uh, masking tape out where there was a countersunk coin so i'm just going to do that very gently and i want to see what we've got underneath there now if you had a device like a Dremel and, and, and things like that with attachments you might be able to clean this uh, better but I'm just using a knife and I'm just scraping away you know any leftover product that I've used to stain and polyurethane to kind of stabilize the antler so I'm just working my way around gingerly because I don't want to you know exaggerate the actual um, size of the actual uh, area that we're going to cover so I'm just doing that at the moment and this is going to take a little bit of time so I'll bring you back when I finish this little bit so I've gone around with a knife and I've cleaned up this actual uh, embossed little bit here and um, I've used a bit of sandpaper as well very gingerly going around it and on top of that I've just got a very fine little plastic um, wire brush and I've just cleaned it out a little bit. So this area is all good now and it's prepped for me to actually put the product I'm going to use. My next job is to, with a very, very non-sticky uh, masking tape, go. you don't want to put too, uh, a too heavy grade sticky uh, tape because you'll pull the polyurethane off so you just want a, a very low grade stickiness and just follow the line of this embossed um, circle because we're going to fill product in here and we don't want the overspill to contaminate the area that we've spent so long cleaning up and getting it to how we want it right then you can see i've put some tape and like i said it doesn't have overly great um, sticking properties so it shouldn't lift off any of the work we've already done i've kept it to the outer part of the ring i don't want none to be on the actual edge going in because i need to have a good solid bond of milliput i mean there are other brands that do the same sort of thing but this is just an epoxy it says super fine white but when you mix the two components the hardener and the epoxy putty together basically it will go hard you can sand it and you can sand it to a very fine finish almost like porcelain bone so that's the effect we're going to have here rather than just leave this horrible mess here there'll be a circle of super fine porcelain white almost bone looking um, uh, 
circle there which will have a brilliant ice white look to it and i think it will look quite nice there and obviously if the gentleman decides at some point he does want to put a coin there we can eventually remove that and sink a coin there again right then i've kneaded the two components together to give me this putty and um it will take some time to go off but what you want to do is try to get it so that there's no major cracks within the putty. Because when you start sanding back down through it, if there are cracks or voids, it will leave an, a horrible like bubble effect on it, like a, a hollow. And it'll be like a, one of those aerated chocolate bars you can get. So you basically want to keep it as compressed and crack free as possible. So keep it as one big... A continuous lump but um, what we have to do is kind of push it out to the outer parts of the actual embossed bit to make sure the epoxy is bonding against the ridge as well as down in the central core piece and you want it so it's domed you don't want it level because you still have to sand and polish it down so you know it's a case you want slightly more than you need just to fill the hollow out. So we'll have a go here. Just getting it all ready to go. Right. I'm pushing it down there. Applying a lot of pressure. And I'm pushing out to the outer pieces there now. There. Right, what the thing is, if you can take away some of it so you don't end up with a big clump of it, the better. But what I'm going to do is just leave it like this and I'll just take the time sanding. I do have the luxury of a bit of time and, you know, I won't worry too much about it. I'd rather just get it all embossed in and we'll come back to this in a moment right as you can see i've just took a little bit of the excess off got it a bit more molded there but it now needs to dry and i'll let that dry till at least uh, tomorrow afternoon i'll give it 24 hours so i'm going to put this to one side and go and select a piece of wood in fact, I may even take this indoors just to allow the uh, ambient temperature to be slightly greater to help it go off. But as for a piece of wood, we'll head out here and uh, select a piece. I've had a quick little scour. I, I do like this one, but it's kind of off traditional. It's more oval than it is round. Uh, I don't want to go too heavy a gauge for it because it would look silly because the deer antler itself is quite dainty but i have selected this nice piece of hazel here and it's got a nice very very nice silvery sheen or shine to it so i can only imagine once we start adding products to it it may actually have a slightly slightly um unusual coloration to it instead of being like olive it could have a kind of like a silvery tint to it but i'm going to get this into the other part of the workshop have a little uh straighten on it there's a few little kinks and then uh, we'll go from there Well, now it's straightening. I've cut it to length, but I've got one little kink. You might just be able to see it there. I want to try and get that out. It's reasonably straight, but I'm doing it with the actual jack or some of the other methods that I can use on this particular apparatus 
to actually straighten the stick. I'm not going to be going outside using steam. The weather's taking a turn and I don't have the option to use steam outside. And um, so basically, let's get to it. Let's get this piece straightened. Then we can start sizing it up even further. I've just took what I know I'm not going to use. I'm not going to do a full thumbstick length because this is a working stick around the farm. A thumbstick is more of a, a countryman stick and um, it's just too long. And with the extra length, if you're giving, you know, cattle a little bit of a prod, there's a danger that, um, you know, you could snap it. So like he did with the other one. So, yeah, let's get to it. I'm not going to show you too much in depth the straightening process because I do have other videos on that. But. This is just a process I'm doing, you know, as part of the rebuild. So I'll show you it, but not fully in depth. Check out one of my other videos for that. So let's get to it. So we've successfully got a straight um, piece of hazel now and uh, I can start working it. First thing is to get rid of some of these knots and then we're going to um, try to actually size it better and we're going to have a look at the bark. I want to take a piece off to do a drawing of a stag's head and I want to take a small piece off to let me put my logo. Other than that, I'm just going to clean this bark up and get it ready. So what I've actually done now is I've just taken off what I want to take off this particular stick and you can see the mess I've got in here and this is why I do like to do it outdoors. But here we are. This is the stick itself and as you can see it's looking very raw. I'll just put it there. You can see I've just taken a piece off there where I'm going to do my wood burning of a stag head. My logo down there. And where I've actually been reducing the wood with the block plane to accept the copper tip. So I've now got to move on to the fine sanding stage now. And as you can see, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. So hello, it's really cold in here. I've got my surf robe on. Um, it's another day. And if you listen that's all hard and I'm going to sand that back and start polishing that in a moment but before I do that I'm getting myself set up to do some wood burning I have actually completed sanding the stick to pretty much where I want it now you may see that I have a stag head drawn on that it's a bit faint and I'm now going to wood burn that and get that done and if I can, I'm going to try and put the gentleman's name just underneath that. I'm going to put my logo. And I've also put a very generous copper tip on this one. Um, all this work that you, hear, that you see here, as in wood burning, sanding, copper tip, and how to bring milliput or an epoxy um, substitute, which uh, you can find different makes like I'm using here, how to, you know, do the prep, do the, these particular aspects of the job. I do have on other videos, so I haven't labored too much on about them. But I'm now going to crack on with the wood burning, uh, get that all done. When I've done that, I'm going to move on to sanding, like I said. And from there, I, you will join me again and we'll start the next process of this uh, build.
Well, I've completed the actual wood burning and done a little bit more sanding. And you can see the stag's head there now. And I've managed to get his name in there without too much difficulty. I've got, be careful not to take a light out, my actual logo there. And I've just done a little bit more further sanding. Now, I've now got to decide basically what the length is going to be here now. So it's getting a bit critical in that factor. And we've now got to cut the joint, the angle the joint now. And um, as for the deer antler, well, as you can see, we haven't marked or damaged any of this. And anything, once it's cleaned up, that we do want to touch up again with uh, polyurethane um, uh, varnish, or that's going to happen when we do the stick. So we can see that that is um, completely filled out that void now, and it feels absolutely silky smooth, just like bone. Now, it's completely flush with the deer antler there. I have considered should I paint it, but ultimately, I think it looks better like that. It, and it feels so smooth, like uh, absolute bone. And um, as a gentleman, you wasn't prepared to do anything other than just say leave it as it is i think we've done the best we can we've smoothed it out we've got a nice lovely lovely ice cold white bone porcelain finish there the slightly jagged edges that is actually the deer antler um when it obviously lost that coin or the embossed um medallion whatever was there and um, it's taken it out, but it's but the epoxy is filled right to the edges. This won't come out, and it helps keep the actual antler antlers integrity together fully. So yes, that's not come out too bad. So I'm now going now to angle that onto the shaft, and I'm going to cut this uh, shaft to size and to this uh, angle. So let's get to it. Right, I've set my shaft exactly how I want it, as in the profile I want to be facing the walker. Now, with that, I do now have um, the deer antler, and I'm going to put it in the position I believe is best suited um, to actually um, work with the actual dimensions. So, but I want to keep, when I place this on, I will just draw a line of the angle of the cut on the shaft. But I do need to keep that threaded bar pretty straight. The reason being, if it dips off either way too high or too low, what you're going to do is get an angled cut. And obviously... We obviously want something straight. So I'm placing it there. And what I'm doing is trying to keep that threaded bar straight. And I think that looks about it. And I believe I have an angle there I can work with. So now I'm going to cut this. I'm doing my level best not to damage any of this bark because I've got it to a point I think it will look quite nice when it receives varnish. I want to start this off and the idea is as I cut down through I don't let the saw wave off in either direction. I need as flush or square an edge as I can get. Because if it veers off, it means I'm going to end up with a bigger gap than necessary on the joint. And the idea is to try and minimise any gap there is or should be between the deer antler and the wood. So I'm very gingerly going to start this off. 
and make sure I get the first few bites of the saw rolling to the angle that I've actually transferred onto the wood. And I'm beginning to bite there a bit. And I'm looking down the saw. I just want to make this go right the way through as square as possible. Right, I'm actually going to try and true this up even more. So what I'm doing, I've got a, a sanding block, but I got the very flat edge and I'm not using the soft bit that has give that is great for going around corners. And what I'm going to do is just take this and I'm going to sand it till I feel that I've, I've achieved a total, total level flat area. So I'm going to put it back down on my table and I'm going to do this for a moment. What I'm trying to do is minimise any chance of there being too big a gap either side of the deer antler. We've got this far so we might as well put in that little bit extra effort. Now I'm going to find the centre of this uh, uh, piece of wood. I can see the internal centre, and I'm just going to mark that slowly or gently. But I'm going to get a small washer and I'm going to place over the top. And with this and your naked eye, you can manoeuvre that washer around on top till you get what is as good a centre marking as you need to. It, it will provide you that eyes on so you can make and you can adjust it around on the piece of wood and you can visualize that internal part of the washer as the center drawing bit that you're going to draw with a pencil and I think that is going to sit very nicely there color it in So I've got my drill bit that I'm happy with in relation to the threaded bar. What I'm going to do now is just place that down on this one as like so. And I'm just going to get a piece of tape roughly about there. And this will indicate when I'm drilling down how far I need to go and where I need to think about stopping. You do not want to keep going further down the stick more than you have to. So it's quite a simple uh, technique, but it will serve you uh, pretty well. So there you go. You can see how far I've got to drill down. As soon as I reach that, that's time for me to stop. So I've got this uh, clamped in a horizontal plane, so it's completely flush to the floor. You can see I've got the drill set up and basically... I'm going to drill down through that dark spot which we've determined is the centre to the depth of that tape on the drill. So let's go and do this. Taking it slow to start with, just to bed the drill in. So that's the antler seated and it hasn't worked out too bad then there is room for me to push it and manoeuvre it about to um, get a better seating position. But ultimately, that's what we've ended up with. 
dropping it in just move it around on top of the actual stick till you find the best seating position I'm losing light in here as you can gather but ultimately yes I can find a nice position for that to seat so I'm quite happy with that and all this excess has been left there for a purpose because I will sand this in and blend it all into the deer antler and make it look flush so as you can see not too bad a job there and as for that small gap there like I said you push it down and wiggle it you can take that away so we're kind of at uh, uh, the important bit, I guess, where we're putting the antler onto the actual stick or shaft. Now, I'm going to let you have a look at what I'm doing here and what I've got. But ultimately, you have a limited amount of time because the epoxy, two-part epoxy, will go off within minutes. And it all depends on the temperature, ambient temperature of the room and in the environment and on top and, and the product itself and it will state the going off or curing times and you'll have to be prepared to work to them now i have my shaft wrapped in um protective uh, plastic bags i've got my area sorted and all ready to go i have a small nail ready to actually push the actual product down into the hole because it's quite um, gloopy and you know quite thick like treacle you can't rely on it making its way right the way to the bottom of the actual shaft you may have to help it and either in it in any case all i can say about this process is be prepared before you start it think of everything that could go wrong understand the product you're going to use and be prepared like to actually move and work fast once you do actually have the antler seated don't keep messing with it thinking you can get a better position once you've got it seated leave it and you know deal with what you got afterwards um so i'll let you have a quick look and we'll go from here so here we are you can see i've got the deer antler covered in plastic bags to protect it i don't want any epoxy on it um same with the the shaft you can see the hole there i have my two part epoxy ready to go i haven't broke the seal yet i've taken out the spatula that you get with it i've got a nail like i was uh, saying which I will use in this fashion to make sure I get plenty down into the shaft to seat from there I have the mixing um, container that comes with the actual packaging you will have to work to the speed of the epoxy and that was determined by the air temperature and on top of that um, you know humidity and everything like that you need to read the instructions and understand your product but be ready for a mess or a, 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 a bit of a disaster as in an overspill and I've taken care of that now now once you do get it seated on it and you're halfway happy you cannot just keep moving it around seat it do it quickly with a bit of like um, confidence in what you're doing once you're happy pull away from it and then let it go and then just clean your mess up right i'm just going to break the seal and get straight on with it i'm not going to do any talking because obviously i want to concentrate on what i'm doing here so um we'll get it on i'll finish up and then we'll talk but you just uh, be able to uh, see what I'm doing. I've broke the seal and now there's no going back. I'm mixing the epoxy and the resin.
Well, my phone cut out at the critical moment where I was going to seat this one on film. But basically all it was is from where you've seen me put resin in the shaft and actually on the actual uh, threaded bar. I then just picked it up, pushed it in the hole, waited for it to push out from the seam and then basically find the best seating position as we've discussed. As you can see, there is mess and that's why I say be prepared, get everything sorted straight away. I'll bring you around here. Sorry about the lighting conditions, it is dark. But I do have a bead of resin all the way around and I will be sanding that back, that shaft. Well, 24 hours has passed and I've been touching the over, uh, you know, product or leftover product to feel how hard it's gone. This morning when I came in here, it had gone off, but there was a slight little rubbery feel to the very top of it. And that suggested to me that I needed to leave it go for the rest of the day, which I have done. Um, yet again, it's getting slightly dark. But basically, it's now time for me to take this out, strip it all down and see what we have here to work with. But I'm very confident I will have something that uh, will be uh, able to be turned and blended in to actually make that uh, deer antler work on that shaft. Right then, with this deer antler, as you can see, I've got this lip. I've got the overspill of resin and little bits of tape. So basically, I've got to clean all this around. And I'm using a sharp knife and I'm going to start filing down all this excess wood. And I'm going to start blending it into the deer antler to how I want it to look and feel. So that's my next job and I'll bring you along with that in a moment when I've achieved some sort of result. Well, I've completely sanded it down and I've got it to pretty much where I want it. Now I've taken some bark off to show some nice wood and I think that will marry in with the deer antler. As you can see, it's a bit of a transition of colour and I've gradually sanded that back into bark again. And I think once this has been coated with varnish, it will really come up that wood will blend right into that uh, deer antler. So what's left for me to do now is to actually give this a coat of varnish, which I'm about to do. And then we'll let it dry and we'll see what that actually uh, looks like. Now, the finish is, you know, wide open to you how you would like to finish it. But for me, I'm just going to use a spray polyurethane on this actual stick. That allows me to get a nice gentle coverage to start with. And then I'll go from there. If I feel I want to try and get a heavier, heavier coat, I may go to another varnish, which I will brush on. But I've been having good results with spray varnish at the moment. So I'm going to see what it's going to come out like. But... Because of the way I've got it all blending in from the deer antler to um, the internal wood coming back out to bark. And then as you've seen, I've got my patches of uh, wood, which I've used to do my wood burning. I just feel if I'm going to use spray, that will allow me to get a more gentle and even coverage, allowing the transitions to flow a bit better. So, you know, that's my theory anyway.
let's have a look how it turns out you'll see me do a quick spray and then obviously um, your next look on it will be when it's a completed item Well, we are finally complete and I have the complete item in my hand here now. It's fully dry, it's had a couple coats of polyurethane and it's um, you know looking very very nice. I'm pleased with the result considering what we had when we started. Ultimately this was the important part for the gentleman to saving this piece of antler. It held special um, you know connections to the past for him for whatever reason but you know we've actually brought the antler back you can still see the scars from you know years of use in it and we've filled out that big hole that was there and it does actually look quite nice it does and it feels nice to the touch there now it's all married in it's not completely a perfect circle because over years of heavy use it has elongated and everything like that but we have filled it out and it's taken up the void we have a nice crisp joint not too much room and not too much evidence of it uh, you know not seating too well so it, it is not a bad joint there the wood underneath is actually looking like it's at a distance part of the antler and as you can see it's slightly slimmer and I've gradually widened it out till we've reached the bark part of the shaft. The reason being is this is a heavier gauge shaft than what was originally attached to this antler. The reason being we know this is going to be used as a farm tool. So we've instinctively given it more uh, girth to be stronger for in and around the farm. Um, this isn't going to be used as a gentleman's stick, uh, thumb stick. It's going to be a working tool but um, yeah we've brought this back really nice and you can see it's got pretty much original colouring to it now. The bark looks absolutely gorgeous it's got like a silver hint or glint to it and um, the actual patterning on it is almost not, not too dissimilar to what you'd get on a grown tree with its bark patterns. We've got some nice knots as you go down through, which are really standing out quite prominent. I also have my um, deer, ant, uh, deer um, draw in there. And I've actually managed to get the name underneath it. And that's actually come up very nice. I have my logo further down. And we've gone into a very generous copper tip. The actual shaft has been brought down quite nicely so it flows into it. There's no jagged edges and uh, no disproportionate, uh, you know, amounts of wood. It all flows down nicely and it's a nice straight shaft. This has absolutely turned out exactly how I wanted it for the gentleman. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a, a marry of the old to the new. And um, if I was staying true uh, and he really wanted it so true to the original, obviously it would have been a thinner shaft and, um, you know, it would have been a different bark I would have had to chose. A bit more of a smoother bark, like I said. But this one here, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. And um, I've sent some pictures off to the gentleman and he's absolutely, you know, chuffed to bits with it. In, in real terms, he gets a stick now with this old antler that really was almost getting to the point, you know, much longer. And it would have degraded to the point it would have been, you know, consigned to the rubbish bin. But, you know, we've got a good solid joint, nice shaft, nice little personal touch, stag's head with his name. And like I said, generous copper tip really good solid shaft and he's happy 
Well, I hope you enjoyed coming along on this uh, restoration rebuild with me. And um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot along the way. And um, I probably won't get too many of these come my way in the future. Quite simply down to the fact I produce mostly um, hiking sticks. And, um, you know, restorations aren't really my specialty. But I've thoroughly enjoyed this. So, um, yeah, all that's left to be said is uh, thank you for watching. And I hope to catch you guys out on the trail. Stay safe. And this is Andy from Hidden Valley Footpaths. All the best.